Good morning. We're following King Asopati's journey through the subtle planes of existence, now through the kingdoms and godheads of the greater life. We're in uh, Canto 6, page 191, towards the bottom at the break. Just to review a little bit from last time. So Aswapati is moving through this kingdom of the greater life and seeing there the beings that live and also the influence of this realm on our world on our material existence here. And as he moves through this world, he's confronted by kind of a mysterious uh, place in which every the meanings are hidden. And he's trying to understand the deeper significances that are underlying this world which is also kind of symbolic in a way of some deeper significance, but the key to those symbols is hidden and he's trying to understand. So I wanna read a little passage from what we read last time from uh, around the middle of page 188. 
So he's, and here she refers to this life goddess, the goddess of this world, of the greater life. Ever she circled towards some far-off light. Her signs still covered more than they revealed, but tied to some immediate sight and will, they lost their purport, that is their meaning, significance, in the joy of use, till stripped of their infinite meaning, they became a cipher gleaming with unreal sense. Armed with a magical and haunted bow, she aimed at a target kept invisible and ever deemed remote, though all was near. As one whose spells illumined characters, the key book of a crab magician text, he scanned her subtle, tangled, weird designs and the screened, difficult theorem of her clues traced in the monstrous sands of desert time the thread beginnings of her titan works, watched her charade of action for some hint, read the no gestures of her silhouettes, and strove to capture in their burden drift the dance fantasia of her sequences, escaping into rhythmic mystery, a glimmer of fugitive feet on fleeing soil. So we see this mysterious nature of this realm, the difficulty of finding out its meanings and significances but he tries to capture, tries to unlock the, the key to these symbols. This character of, the, of this world of greater life continues in the next section that we're going to read. Now, we haven't read through this last section yet, so we're going to just read through, and then we'll go back afterwards and comment on it. So, Suresh, would you like to begin? Yeah, but he felt near his feet in her palms. It's possible, persons was a matter of sin. His soul is real in apparent things. Even upon death, the street is like his feet. But a solid outside. Now near bear is trace. His stamp on a hat is undiscoverable. The pathos of law hides this it appear. Only sometimes is called the shadowy light that seems a hint of pale reality. Life stare at him when you confused outline, offering a picture the eye could not see, the story that was it not written there, as in a fragmentary of cloth design, life's meanings fell from the pursuing eye, life's message has life's Real self from sight, life secret sent is written within above. The thought that gives itself lives far beyond. It is not seen in its often finished design. Thank you. Artem? Um, in vain, we hope to read the baffling signs, or find the word of the half-played charade. Only in that greater life a cryptic thought is found, 
is hinted some interpreting word that makes the earth myth a intelligible. Something was seen at last that looked like truth. In a half-lit air of hazardous mystery, the eye that looks at the dark half of truth made out an image mid a vivid blur and peering through a mist of subtle tints, he saw a half-blind chained divinity bewildered by the world in the which he moved, yet conscious of some light prompting his soul, attached to strange, far-off shimmerings, led by them fluting of a distant player, he thought his way amid life's louder and call, and the index cows of her myriad steps towards some total deep infinitude. Thank you. So, Hini? Around crowded the forest of her signs, at hazard, he read by, by arrow leaps of thought that hit the mark by guess or luminous chance. Her changing color road lights of idea and her signals of uncertain swift event. The hieroglyphs of her symbol, pageantries, and her landmarks in the tangled paths of time. In her mazes of approach and of retreat, to every side she draws him and repels. But drawn too near, escapes from his embrace. All, always she leads him, but no way is sure. Allured by the many-toned marvel of her chant, attracted by the witchcraft of her moods, all moved by her casual touch to joy and grief. He loses himself in her, but wins her not. A fugitive paradise smiles at him from her eyes. He dreams of her beauty made forever his. He dreams of his mastery her limbs shall bear. He dreams of the magic of her breast of bliss. Thank you. Rabbi? In her illumined script, her fanciful translation of God's pure original text, he thinks to read the scripture wonderful, periodic key to unknown beatitudes. But the word of life is hidden in its script. The chant of life has lost its divine note. Unseen, a captive in a house of sound, a spirit lost in the splendor of a dream, listens to a thousand voiced illusions ode. A delicate weft of sorcery steals the heart, or a fiery magic tints her tones and hues. Yet, they but wake a thrill of transient grace, a vagrant march struck by the wanderer of time. They call to a brief unsatisfied delight or wallow in the ravishments of mind and sense, but miss the luminous answer and the soul, a blind heart throb that reaches joy through tears, a yearning toward peaks forever unreached, an ecstasy of unfulfilled desire. Track the last heavenward climbings of her voice. Thank you. Sudanya.
transmuted our past sufferings memories into an old sadness sweet escaping train turn our heart tears to chains of diamond pain our sorrow into a magic crown of song weep our hearts snatches of felicity that touches the surface then escape or die astray the astray in the eco caravans of desire it guards the phantom of a soul's dead hopes and keeps alive the voice of spirit things or lingers upon sweet and errant notes hunting for pleasure in the heart of pain thank you uh miss would you like to read faithful hand has touched the cosmic chords and the intrusion of a troubled strain covers the inner music's hidden key that guides unheard the surface cadences yet is it joy to live and to create and joy to love and labor through all fail and labor though all fails and joy to seek though all we find the seeds and all on which we lean betray our trust yet something in its depth was worth the pain a passionate memory haunts with ecstasy's fire even grief has joy hidden beneath its roots for nothing is truly vain the one has made in our defeated hearts god's strength survives and victory star still lights our desperate road Our death is made a passage to new worlds. This to life's music gives its anthem swell. To all she lends the glory of her voice. Heaven's raptures whisper to her heart and pass. Earth's transient yearnings cry from her lips and fade. Thank you. Uh, yes. Sir, would you like to read? Alone the god given him escapes her art that came with her from her spiritual home but stopped halfway and failed silent word to wake in some deep pause of waiting worlds the murmur suspended in eternity's hush but no breeze comes from the sup uh, supernal peace the sumptuous interlude occupies the ear and the heart listens and the soul consents and events and music is re- it repeats wasting on transit's time eternity the tremolo of the voices of the hours oblivious screens the high intended scene the self embodying spirit came to play on the vast the record of nature force only mighty number murmur here and there of the eternal world the blissful voice our beauty touch transfiguring heart and sense the wandering splendor and a mystic cry recalls the strength and sweetens heart no more thank you marker Here is a gap. Here stops or sinks life's force. This deficit purpose the magician's skill. This want makes all the rest seem thin and bare. A half sight draws the horizon of her acts. 
Her depths remember what she came to do, but the mind has forgotten or the heart mistakes. In nature's endless lines is lost the God. In knowledge to sum up omniscience, in action to erect the omnipotent, to create her creator here was her heart's conceit, to invade the cosmic scene with other God. Toiling to transform the still far absolute into an all-fulfilling epiphany, into an utterance of the ineffable, she would bring the glory here of the absolute's force. Change poise into creation's rhythmic swing, Mary with the sky of calm, a sea of bliss, a fire to call eternity into time, make body's joy as vivid as a soul's, earth she would lift to neighborhood with heaven, labors life to equate with the supreme and reconcile the eternal and the abyss. Thank you. Surya? Her pragmatism of the transcendent Transcendent truths, fierce science with the, the voices of the gods. But in the cry, the single voice is lost. For nature's vision climbs beyond her acts. The life of gods in heaven she sees above. A demigod emerging from an ape. Is all she can in our mortal element. Here the half god, the half titan, are her peak. This great life uh, wavers, twist earth and sky. A poignant paradox pursues her dreams. Her hooded energy moves an ignorant world to look for a joy her own strong grasp puts up. In her embrace, it cannot turn to its source. Immense her power, endless her eggs vast drive. Astray is its significance and lost, all through she carries in her secret breast the low and joining curve of all things born. Her knowledge partial seems her purpose is small. On the soil of a yearning tread her sumptuous, sumptuous hours. Thank you. Thank you. That's possible. Helmut? A leaden nescience weighs the wings of thought. Her power oppresses the being with its garbs. Her actions prison its immortal gaze. A sense of limit haunts her masteries, and nowhere is assured content or peace. For all the depth and beauty of her work, a wisdom lacks that sets the spirit free. An old and faded charm had now her face and palled for him her quick and curious law. His white soul asks a deeper joy than hers. Out of her dead lines he sought escape. But neither gate of horn nor ivory he found, nor postern of spiritual sight. There was no issue from that dream like space. Our being must move eternally through time. Death helps us not. Vain is the hope to cease. A secret will compels us to endure. 
Our life's response is in the infinite. It cannot end. Its end is life supreme. Thank you. Death is a passage, not the goal of our walk. Some ancient deep impulsion lingers on. Our souls are dragged as with a hidden leash, carried from birth to birth, from world to world. Our acts prolong after the body's fall, the old perpetual journey without pause. No silent peak is found where time can rest. This was a magic stream that reached no sea. However far he went, wherever turned, the wheel of works ran with him and outstripped. Always a farther task was left to do. A beat of action and a cry of surge forever grew in that unquiet world. A busy murmur filled the heart of time. All was contrivance and unceasing stir. A hundred ways to live were tried in vain. The sameness that assumed a thousand forms strove to escape from its long monotone and made new things that soon were like the old. A curious decoration lured the eye and novel values furbished ancient themes to cheat the mind with the idea of change. A different picture that was still the same appeared upon the cosmic vague background. Thank you. Anandi. Only <clears throat> another labyrinth in house of creatures and their loins and events, the city of the traffic of our own sound. The market of creation and her wealth was offered to the labyrinth mind and heart. A circuit ending where it first began, it dubbed the forward and eternal march, of progress and perfection unknown road. Each final scheme leads to a sequel plan. Yet every new departure seems the last. Inspired evangel, there is an ultimate peak, proclaiming a panacea for all times ills, or carrying thought in its ultimate zenith life, and trumpeting supreme discovery, each brief idea, a structure perishable, published the immortality of its rule, its claim to be the perfect form of things whose last epitome, times the golden best. Okay. Ah. Come here, Sarah. Why don't we just start back here? But nothing, but nothing has been achieved of infinite work. A world made ever a new never complete. They are based all attempts on lost attempts. <coughs> and so a yeah, fragment as the eternal core in the animals own only total of each then. Existence seen the way necessities act. The posture of eternal opposite in a trust and the next sun close of embrace that play without the number 
for idea that hundreds much of them become a ghost or written on a bare blackboard, blackboard of space or Twitter and requiring some of souls. I hope that there is a light that never shown the level of an unaccomplished force tied to its act in a dim eternity. There is no end or no connect be seen. Although detected, life must struggle on. Always she sees the crown she cannot grasp. The eyes are fixed beyond the fallen shape. Thank you. Artem. There are quivers still within her breast and ours, a glory that was once and is no more. Uh, or there are calls to us from some unfulfilled beyond, a greatness yet unreached by the halting world, in the memory behind our mortal sense, a dream persists, persists of larger, happier air, breathing around free hearts of joy and love, forgotten by us, immortals in lost time. A ghost of bliss pierces uh, her haunted depths, for she remembers still, thought now so far, her realm of a golden ease and glad desire, and the beauty and strange and happiness that were hers. In the sweetness of her glowing paradise, in her kingdom of immortal ecstasy, halfway between God's silence and the abyss. Thank you. Nitya. This knowledge in our hidden paths we keep. Awake to a vague mystery's appeal, we meet a deep unseen reality, far truer than the world's face of present truth. We are chased by a self we cannot now recall, and moved by a spirit we must still become. As one who has lost the kingdom of his soul, we look back to some God face of our birth, other than this imperfect creature here, and hope in this or a diviner world to recover yet from heaven's patient guard what by our mind's forgetfulness we miss, our being's natural felicity. Our heart's delight we have exchanged for grief. The body's thrill we bartered for mere pain. The bliss for which our mortal nature yearns, as yearns an obscure moth to blazing light. Thank you. So him. Our life is a march to a victory never won. This wave of being longing for delight, this eager turmoil of unsatisfied strengths, these long far files of forward striving hopes, lift worshipping eyes to the blue void called heaven, looking for the golden hand that never came. The advent for which all creation waits, the beautiful, how do we say this? The sage. The sage. The sage of eternity that shall appear upon the roads of time. Yet still to ourselves, we say rekindling faith, Oh, surely one day he shall come to our cry, one day he shall create our new, our life anew, and utter the magic formula of peace, and burning perfection to the scheme of things. One day he shall descend to life and earth, 
leaving the secrecy of the eternal doors into a world that cries to him for help and brings the truth that sets the spirit free, the joy that is the baptism of the soul, the strength that is the outstretched arm of love. One day he shall lift his beauty's dreadful veil, impose delight on the world's beating heart, and bear his secret body of light and bliss. Thank you. B. Now we strain to now we strain to reach an unknowing goal. There is no end of seeking and of birth. There is no end of dying and return. The life that wins its aim asks greater aims. The life that fails and dies must live again. Till it has found itself, it cannot cease. All must be done for which life and death were made. But who shall say that even then is rest, or their repose and action are the same. In the deep breast of God, supreme delight, in a high state where ignorance is no more, each movement is a wave of peace and bliss. Repose, God's motionless creative force. Action, a ripple of the infinite, and birth, a gesture of eternity. A sun of transfiguration still can shine, and night can bear its core of mystic light. The self-canceling, self-afflicting paradox into the self-luminous mystery might change. The imbroglio into a joyful miracle. Thank you. Sudanya. Then God could be visible here. Here take a shape. Disclose would be the spirit's identity. Life would reveal her true immortal face. But now a tremulous labor is her fate. In its recurrent decimal of events, birth, death, or a ceaseless interaction point, the old question mark margins is finished phase, his volume of our efforts history, a limping yes to the eon's journey still, accompanied by an eternal no, all seems in vain. Yet endless is the game, impassive turns the ever-circling wheel. Life has no issue, death brings no release. A prisoner of itself, the being's life, and keeps its futile immortality. Extinction is denied, its soul escape. An error of gods has made the world or indifferent the eternal watches time. End Thank you. I don't know. Which line? Okay. Oh. The question was where it began? Oh, okay. Okay. So we go back to page 191 at the break.
So again, we'll read through and then comment a little bit. So you'll continue. She felt your spirit in her forms. Passive presence was her nature's strength. The soul is real in apparent things. Even upon earth, the spirit is life's key. Into an old sadness's sweet escaping trail, turned no, no, are her... No, no. Oh, I missed the page. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even upon earth, mm. the spirit okay. is life's key, but her solid outsides nowhere bear its praise. Its stamp on her axe is undiscoverable. The pathos of lost heights is its appeal. Only sometimes is caught a shadowy line that seems a hint of veiled reality. Life stared at him with vague, confused outlines, offering a picture the eyes could not keep, a story that was yet not written there. As in a fragmentary half-lost design, life's meanings fled from the pursuing eye. Life's visage, visage hides life's real sense from sight. Life's secret sense is written within, above. The thought that gives it sense lives far beyond. It is not seen in its half-finished design. Thank you. In vain? No, no, no. Uh, we'll just pause for a few moments and then uh, we'll comment on these. Just kind of reread it. Silently. So in these first lines, he, Sri Aurobindo compares this world in which he's traveling through, this world of the greater life, with our world here on earth. So, and he's making the point that he feels this spirit kind of below the surfaces of this world, of this life world, and that that is the key, the spirit within, that is the key to the outside circumstances, events. But he cannot really find that key. He cannot grasp it and really understand its significance. And he's saying that is the same also in our world on earth. The true significance of things is below the surfaces of life, but the key is hidden from us. We can't quite grasp it. He says, her solid outsides nowhere bear its trace. Its stamp on her axe is undiscoverable. He says this, a pathos of lost heights is its appeal. So we keep kind of striving in some way for the secret, and that's the appeal of the life. 
And sometimes we catch little fragments of its truth. Sometimes it's caught the shadowy line that seems a hint of veiled reality. But usually this life confronts us with vague, confused outlines, offering a picture the eyes could not keep. We can't grasp this confused, vague outline of things. The story that was not yet written there, the complete story is not fully uh, apparent in things. The end of the story, the beginning of the story, all of that is hidden still. We don't see that. Would you say that uh, where he says in the third line where we're reading, this soul is real, but that soul there is a pun? is a pun that it could have two significances. The soul, the spiritual soul, or this alone is real. I mean, maybe, I don't, yeah. It would fit either way. So it's as if the outsides of life are like a fragmentary, half-lost design. The life meanings fled from the pursuing eye. Life's secret sense is written within and above. The thought that gives it sense lives far beyond. So now we can continue. In vain we hope to read the baffling signs or find the word of the half-played charade. Only in that greater life a cryptic thought is found, is hidden some interpreting word that makes the earthmus a tale intelligible. Something was seen at last that looked like truth. In a half-lit air of hazardous mystery, the eye that looks at the dark half of truth, made out of an imagined mind, mid a vivid blur, and peering through a mist of subtle tints. He saw a half-blind chain divinity, bewildered by the world in which he moved, yet conscious of some light prompting his soul. Attracted to strange far-off shimmerings, led by the fluting of a distant player, he sought his way amid life's laughter and call, and the index chaos of her myriad steps towards some total deep infinitude. Thank you. Just wait.
So he's saying that trying to read the baffling signs of the significance of life in the surfaces, in the appearances of life, is a vain effort. But then he says, only in that greater life. So now he refers back to this higher, this world of the, the greater life. A cryptic thought is found, is hinted some interpreting word that makes the earth myth a tale intelligible. So some hints can be found, some cryptic thought, some kind of hidden, maybe secret ideas give some clue to the significances of life. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we find these hints there in these kind of cryptic images and symbols of the Vedas. We can find hints to the significance of our earth myth. Yeah, I think it's... It's a being which has that uh, thing to aspire. Yes. And it's not still in that lower Right. It's that influence of this world here. Right. Mm. So that's how this world influences us. It inspires our higher aspirations and searchings. Right, right. And then he's describing this kind of searching, attracted to strange, far off shimmerings, led by the fluting of a distant player. Here we're reminded of Krishna calling the soul with his flute, his beautiful flute music. And when that call comes, he sought his way amid life's laughter and call in the index chaos of her myriad steps towards some total deep infinitude. When we start searching for that, When he looks into life kind of deeply, looking into the dark half of truth, he made out an image mid a vivid blur. Vivid blur, that's interesting juxtaposition. And peering through a mist of subtle tints he saw a half-blind, chained divinity, bewildered by the world in which he moved. It's as, it's as if he sees somehow the soul within or a being within striving to find its way through the darkness and 
confusion of life. But don't you feel it tries to balance it because we have all these different images? Because he's got the laughter in here also yeah. and the fluting of uh, the infinite. So he gives the way we perceive it sometimes like this, sometimes like that, sometimes like that. But it's that baffling. Uh, all of it together. Yeah. So we give you it all. It's kind of all of a mixture, some spiritual seeking, some happiness of life, some joy here, some pleasure. But the chain to goddess is really a tough one. Mm. She's searching, but unable to really break free. Pedro, would you like to continue? Yes, up on the index. No, I cloud. think around crowded. That's where I should start. Yes. So around crowded, the forest over signs. At hazard, he read by arrow lips of thought that hit the mark by guest or luminous chance. At changing colored road lights, White year, and her signs, and her signals, signals, signals of uncertain which sweet event. The hieroglyphs of her symbols, pageantries, and her landmarks in the tangled paths of time. In her mazes of reproach and of retreat, to every side she draws him and repels, but draw too near escapes from his and embrace. Always she leads him, but no way is sure. Allured by the many-toned marvel of her chant, attracted by the witchcraft of her mood, and moved by her casual touch to joy and grief. He loses himself in her, but wins her not. A fugitive paradise smiles at him from her eyes. He dreams of her beauty made for every his. He dreams of his mastery her limbs shall bear. He dreams of the magic of her breast of bliss. Thank you. In this confusion of life with all these many different aspects, different symbols, this maze of life, sometimes his intuition could find some deeper significance. In the crowded around the crowded, around, crowded the forest of her signs. At hazard, he read by arrow leaps of thought. So this reminds us of intuition that hit the mark by guess or luminous chance, her changing colored road lights of idea. It's interesting that he brings this in. I wonder when that was written, whether he's talking of traffic lights and, the, and her signals of uncertain swift event. 
the hieroglyphs of her symbol pageantries and her landmarks in the tangled paths of time. So sometimes his intuition can find out some signals or some significance of these hieroglyphs, these symbolic symbol or characters. Pageantry, it's uh, like a big festive kind of event, maybe with dancing and singing and lots of pomp and circumstance. Hieroglyphs are like these uh, Egyptian characters, writings that have secret meanings. But then he brings in again all this, these different attractions of this life, like B was kind of talking about this kind of mixture of different things. To every side she draws him and repels, but drawn too near escapes from his embrace. All ways she leads him, but no way is sure. He's allured by the many-toned marvel of her chant attracted by the witchcraft of her moods and moved by her casual touch to joy and grief. He loses himself in her, but wins her not. So he gets captivated by life and all its charms and its colors and pageantries. But yes, uh, he is King Aswapati, and she is this life goddess of this place. But he, we could also say, is kind of the soul of all of us, too, gets lost in this. Hmm? She is the nature. Yes. Nature as much. Yeah. He dreams that he's going to catch hold of her and take her for his own, enjoy this life and really take it into hand. But always she escapes, always it just kind of, the game goes on and he never is really able to do that. Because your movement is always changing, so you never get there. Yeah, there is a, a movement, a general movement, but also there are all these little circles and things that we can get caught up into. So he's also describing these little, you know, this swirl of uh, desires that we can get caught up into and uh, this beauty of some aspect of life that can captivate us and then we spend two lives, you know, playing with that and then we move on, but... <laughs> So we'll continue, Margaret. 
her Illumined script, a fanciful translation of God's pure original text. He thinks to read the scripture wonderful, I read the key to unknown beatitudes. But the word of life is hidden in its script. The chant of life has lost its divine note. Unseen, a captive in a house of sound, the spirit lost in the splendor of a dream, listens to a thousand-voiced illusions old. A delicate weft of sorcery steals the heart, or fiery magic tints her tones and hues, yet they but wake a thrill of transient grace. A vagrant march struck by the wanderer time, they call to a brief, unsatisfied delight, or wallow in ravishments of mind and sense, but miss the luminous answer of the soul. A blind heart throb that reaches joy through tears, a yearning towards peaks forever unreached, an ecstasy of unfulfilled desire, track the last heavenward climbings of her voice. Thank you. In these first lines, he characterizes this life as a fanciful translation of God's pure original text. So it's kind of a copy or a translation of God's significance and God's truth in a kind of a fanciful uh, way of expression. So there's a lot of beauty and a lot of charm to the life. And in that, he, Aswapati, or we, think to read the scripture wonderful, to find the secret of existence, the hieratic key to unknown beatitudes. But the word of life is hidden in its script. So it's hidden from the surfaces of life and the appearances and the beauty and charm, still hidden below all of that. The chant of life has lost its divine note. Unseen, a captive in a house of sound, the spirit lost in the splendor of a dream. So that's like our souls kind of trapped within this splendid dream of life, getting attracted here and there, but missing the soul's aim, the soul's truth. Here in that world, there isn't a soul per se 
like, uh, or an evolving soul like we have. It's a spirit. It's the Purusha standing behind it also. On earth or in that plane? <laughs> On earth or in the life plane? Yes, the spirit lost in the splendor of a dream. So there it's identified. It's lost two times. Lost is divine knowledge. And lost is splendor. Mm. It's like two times. Yeah. Illusions of the life has lost its divine note, and the spirit is lost in the splendor of this life, in this dream. They're lost to each other. This beauty of life, this thousand-voiced illusions ode, this delicate weft of sorcery, it steals the heart, but it only wakes a thrill of transient grace. It only gives a, a transient pleasure and enjoyment. It's not deeply fulfilling to the soul. They call to a brief unsatisfied delight or wallow in ravishments of mind and sense, but miss the luminous answer of the soul. But yet it continues to search, to yearn towards peaks forever unreached, towards an ecstasy of unfulfilled desire. These track the last heavenward climbings of her voice. She's still climbing, still searching for that deeper truth, that greater delight. Uh, Nitya, at the bottom of the page. Transmuted, transmuted our past sufferings memories into an old sadness, sweet escaping trail. Turn on her tears to gems of diamond pain, her sorrow into magic crown of song. Brief are her snatches of felicity that touch the surface then escape or die. A lost remembrance echoes in her depths. A deathless longing is hers, a veiled self's call. A prisoner in the mortal's limiting world, a spirit wounded by life's sobs in her breast. A cherished suffering is her deepest crime. A wandering on forlorn despairing roots, Along the roads of sound, a frustrated voice, forsaken cries to a forgotten bliss. Astray in the echo caverns of desire, it guards the phantoms of a soul's dead hopes and keeps alive the voice of perished things, who lingers upon sweet and errant notes, hunting for, a ple for pleasure in the heart of pain. Thank you.
this yearning of life for delight, for lasting truth, but never finding it, always missing somehow. It brings this kind of suffering or pain to her breast because it continues and continues on and on and she never finds. And then he says, transmuted our past sufferings, memories. She transmutes or changes them. They become an old sadness, his sweet escaping trail, turned are her tears to gems of diamond pain. So even her sadness, she turns into something, something maybe that of a kind of a strength in a way a diamond pain, gems of diamond pain. They give her a kind of also a strength. She grows from that suffering. Mm. Through that long process of being buried under ground, turns into diamonds. Her sorrow changes into a magic crown of song. She gets brief snatches of felicity, of happiness, but they soon escape and die. And this lost remembrance echoes in her depths There's this deathless longing she has. A spirit wounded by life sobs in her breast. A cherished suffering is her deepest cry. She's a wanderer on forlorn, despairing roots along the roads of sound, a frustrate voice, forsaken cries to a forgotten bliss. Here he seems to be suggesting the soul kind of giving in to despair in a sense of This pain of life, of an unfulfilled life, weighs on her, but it also becomes a spur towards looking for something else. Turning away from these surface thrills of life towards some, something deeper. So that pain, that suffering, she can turn into something that helps her. Will we continue? Tell me. A faithful hand has touched the cosmic cords, and the intrusion of a troubled strain covers the inner music's hidden key that guides unheard the surface cadences. It is a joy to live and to create, and joy to love and labor, though all fails. 
and joy to seek, though all we find deceives, and all on which we lean betrays our trust. Yet something in its depths was worth the pain. A passionate memory haunts with ecstasy's fire. Even grief has joy hidden beneath its roots. For nothing is truly vain the one has made. In our defeated hearts, God's strength survives. And victory's star still lights our desperate road. Our death is made a passage to new worlds. This, to life's music, gives its anthem swell. To all she lends the glory of her voice. Heaven's raptures whisper to her heart and pass. Earth transient yearnings cry from her lips and faith. Thank you. Sri Aurobindo doesn't leave us in despair of life. He says that even though things seem terrible at times, and yet it's a joy to live and to create, despite all the pain and the suffering and problems, and joy to love and labor, even though all fails, a joy to seek, though all we find deceives. <clears throat> Yet something in its depth was worth the pain. And then he says, even grief has joy hidden beneath its roots. Even there is something in that suffering that sustains it. A joy is there within that, that still enables it to continue, to go on, to keep seeking. For nothing is truly vain the one has made. And in our defeated hearts, God's strength survives. And victory's star still lights our desperate road. And, uh, this is not also like this. I experienced it often, and I felt it was painful or difficult. Then much later, I saw what it brought, uh, uh, what it gave to me, mm -hmm. what it experienced, and what new steps opened for us. And we are understanding and consciousness. Yeah, often our difficulties help us. We learn from them. Hmm? Uh, yeah. She also has to suffer and turn her tears to diamond pearls or, or diamond pearls. Yeah, this image 
and victory's star still lights our desperate road. So despite the darkness of the path, there's still this light of victory that we're moving towards. And even death is a passage to new worlds. So death, even death, is not the end. It's just a passageway to continue on our journey. Can we just maybe read this last section before we stop? Tinica. Alone the God-given hymn escapes her art that came with her from her spiritual home, but stopped halfway and failed. A silent word awakened some deep pause of waiting worlds. A murmur suspended in eternity's hush, but no breath comes from the supernal peace. The sumptuous interlude occupies the ear, and the heart listens and the soul consents. In evanescent music, it repeats, wasting on transience time's eternity. The tremolo of the voices of the hours, oblivious, screens the high intended theme. The self-embodying spirit came to play on the vast clavichord of nature force. Only a mighty murmur here and there of the eternal word. The blissful voice or beauty's touch transfiguring heart and sense. A wandering splendor and a mystic cry recalls the strength and sweetness heard no more. Thank you. So life brings many experiences and pleasures and joys and sufferings. But the one thing that it doesn't bring is the truth of the divine, this abiding delight. Only we catch little glimpses of it, perhaps that keep us going, keep us searching. Only a mighty murmur here and there of the eternal word, the blissful voice, or beauty's touch, transfiguring heart and sense. A wandering splendor and a mystic cry recalls the strength and sweetness heard no more. That strength and sweetness from which this life originally fell into its current state. So we stop there for today.
Thanks to Sri Aurobindo 